thank you dr sarman uh, for uh, for inviting me of course the topic was given it was uh, difficult for a person like me because uh, after listening so many lecture i thought that uh, it is better to avoid and to, to remain quiet but anyhow i have traveled from peshawar so let me share yes sir uh, the topic was evaluation of trainee and trainer and it is quite difficult to evaluate a person who is a speaker who is a teacher and who is a trainee and when i concentrate so bismillah rahman rahim in in quran it is written ila qadr ma'lum wa qadarna fa ni'ma al qadirun to the extent known so we did mayyar and we are the best to mayyar the things and this slide came in my mind this is a you see a sort of evaluation of life span evaluation when human is a child when he become toddler when he is coming up as a trainee when he become supervisor a mentor retired and ultimately this is a process of evaluation so by definition evaluation is a process which incorporate a number of modalities for example evaluation could be find out the quality of a teaching program the teaching ability of faculty member and the strength of the curriculum what is training evaluation training evaluation is a systemic process to analyze if training program initiative are effective and efficient trainer and human resource professional use training evaluation to assess if the trainee training program are aligned with the goal and their objective so what are the tools of evaluation written appraisal rating scale checklist interview observation and video typing and these four points are important begin with an end in mind when you are entering in a specialty to so think about the climax as i most of the time i i quote this sentence that spine is the beginning of neurosurgeon and vascular surgery is the climax of neurosurgeon i call to new neurologist that the 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 climax of your thinking become the beginning of my my thinking so think about my my climax so this is just when i i discuss in the department so what, what once you are coming in the, in the specialty you must think about the end in your mind the trainee feedback that is important and when he is finishing the training what learning objective and what message he is taking after qualifying the exam and of course the behavior of the trainee so these are the four points which are important for an any effective training evaluation so it means that the purpose of assessment is formative that is to increase the quality whereas evaluation is all about judging qualities assessment is concerned with process while evaluation focus on the product so now there is product and process judging the quality and quality itself so assessment and evaluation is like that on one side you have assessment and on the other side you have the evaluation and same is when you are assessing you are measuring while when you are evaluating you think about the value and when you are coming for exam so this is the measurement in examination by different tools like mcq sqq is why why assignment so this is for qualifying the exam we assess the candidate but the curriculum the system can be evaluated by different tools like survey questionnaires interview exam reports and focal group discussion in exam the student on one side and when he is appearing in exam so this is evalu assessment and evaluation is the whole system the whole curriculum the institution or the system which we are providing for the students as well as for the patient in the country after assessment the candidate fail or pass while in evaluation we give reports and recommendation so that is the only reason that from candidate the feedback is taken after the fellowship exam while recommendation are made after different conferences and after different meetings so this exact calculation is assessment while the 
pending the evaluation. But what happens when the process of evaluation becomes so difficult? You see, and thinking about the, the results, the results is, you see, so it is so simple. So make the system of evaluation and a system so simple that the candidate can get through, not like this. These are the learning objective in my mind. And this is also in the college format, written communication skill, verbal communication, examination skill, patient management skill, and skill in research. And these are the five important points which must be considered during the training period when the candidate is completing his residency program. The training objective, this is again from the college side, that these are the objective. Initially assess the patient seeking neurological or neurosurgical treatment, manage patient requiring neurosurgical treatment, understand, uh, uh, undertake research and publish findings and acquire new information. Recognize the role of the team, advise the community and train professional and other juniors. So this is now training. You see on one side, you have the coaching, the teaching and the knowledge, and then experience and the further development. So this make, you see, a candidate or a person, a learned person. And this is what I learned in my almost 55 years uh, life. And what I learned in 27 years of my clinical career, that what are the channels of knowledge? So the channel of knowledge are, on the top is the teacher. We learn from the teacher. Any person who teach you, he become your teacher, our supervisor, and our mentor. This is a big channel because he summarized so many books and so many chapters in one or two sentences. Second channel of knowledge is the ordinary books and the media which daily we read and we observe. The third is the specialty books, like in neurosurgery or for the spine surgery, we recommend two or three books. Then traveling itself is a big channel of learning. You learn so many things in traveling. And experience of the senior and junior itself, it is continuously a channel. If you are seven years experience, you cannot, you see, compete with a person who has 20 years experience. Observing the mistakes, the results, the complication at management, the behavior with the patient and relative, this all included in experience. And if none of these work, you concentrate on Quran and Hadith, and this is revolution, re revelation from Al Almighty. He directs you to do the thing in this way in the world. And when you become Ashik, you, so, you, you, you know Ashik, when you are loving a speciality up to the extent of your mind, then there is another channel, and that is Ilmim Wahiba. A sixth sense is guiding you to do and not to do. To do and it is so many times you are driving, and if in a fraction of a second, you control yourself and you 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 uh, you uh, prevent the accident. So this is Ilm Muahiba. Still it exists when you are operating in theater, when to pull. You are feeling the tools with your finger, and the tool is giving you sensation in your fingers. It means the memory is still in, in the tips of your finger. You are not feeling with the finger, but the tool is giving you. <coughs> so this is Ilm Muahiba. These are the seven channels of knowledge, and we must practice, and we must exercise these channels. Method of teaching. This was in the past one teacher, one student, when we were in village, and when we start learning. This is historical method. Then when we were admitted in the school, it became a scientific method. One teacher, one classroom. Then when our schools were graded in better school and good school, the problem-based learning was started in short group discussion. And then the ideas come in the mind, okay, we can, we can produce so many educated children, but either they are competent enough to perform this procedure. Yes, so the competency-based learning started, and then in the end, this must be the objective, the outcome-based learning. So whatever you are going to exercise, the ultimately we must focus on the outcome. A neurosurgeon which we are producing, 
either they are providing in reality the services to the society which they need they may be competent but the circumstances and the the conditions are not favorable for them we produce every year around about 20 25 neurosurgeon but ignoring their placement their role in society on which side we are directing so these are the different method of learning and this if we concentrate just you see about about t1 i i must say so all these tools are there we listen with the ears we see with the eyes we think with the mind we speak with the tongue and we write with the hand and the better tool is the writing because when you are writing it means you are talking when you are writing it means you are look, looking when you are writing it means you are listening and you are thinking so this is the the weakest point on our part when we start writing and this is hadith of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki qayyud al ilm bil kitab this is for the medical writing this is for whatever you learn in your life you write that qayyid it means you compile that your knowledge in written shape so this is a sort of you see a, a good uh, method of learning the domain of learning we know and the attitude of the trainee this become a difficult task task now every trainee he expect that there should be good relationship the information should be informative the, it, it should be transferred he must be in a position to take consent towards self development respect your patient and vice versa deal with the patient with honesty and compassion recognize stress in the life to him, himself in the hospital and he must diffuse that the attention handle criticism by the colleagues and patient and this is the most difficult job and towards society again he has certain uh, things he has completed that so this all included in the attitude and this is the competency chart every department of neurosurgery has this competency competency chart in the department again this is my own observation that for a trainee one should follow the step ladder pattern number 1 when to operate so when he enters in department in the first 6 months at least i tell them that you just learn what type of patient need surgery then i told that when to operate what are the indication and contraindication with limitation and complication then i tell them when not to operate that become the contraindication and the limitation for the trainee how to operate this is the most easy job because you show a technical work and hopefully within 6 month or 1 year he learn this and in the end where to operate and this is the point where the complication arises he know the timing the theater set up the tools which he has in the department and the backup support of course so new new surgery is the surgery of jewelers or it is the surgery of diamond cutters so we are not jewelers we are diamond cutters and if we miscalculate so you see hero will become zero constant and consent explain and deliver knowledge this is the thing on which i give stress after disease according to the iq of the patient in their language advise investigation according to the availability essentiality and financial status of the patient explain the treatment option according to the consultant competency and acceptability to the patient according to their knowledge and and in their their, their language and explain the possible complication and one thing which is again important that is the financial status of the patient so we must exercise different treatment option according to these points the supervisor is a motivator he must have these features of subject depth and knowledge communication skill true learner a team player of course and his attitude must be acceptable because he is privileged the supervisor is privileged and he has certain responsibility he has privileges because he is a teacher he become examiner supervisor the dean and he is remembered till till the death of the trainee 
and probably when the trainee becomes supervisor, so he quotes the statement and the techniques of his teacher to his students. So he remains alive for the rest of the life. So these are the privileges, but he is responsible for the assessment curriculum, for, for you see, for the environment and for the ethics to the students, protection of the students' rights as well. That is why I say when you are authorized, so if you are absolutely authorized to authority corrupt and absolute authority corrupt you absolutely. And the students and the teachers both can be privileged and responsible, but there are certain teachers still, they are privileged, but they are not responsible. And certain are, they are not privileged, but they are responsible. And a group is, they are not privileged and they are not responsible. So we think about those who are privileged and those who are responsible. And the ideal will be those who are not privileged, but they feel that we are responsible. And this is the most, most important slide which I took from Professor Atarinam. Yeah, the thing should be done in this way. Urgent and non-urgent and important and non-important. And he told me, then urgent and important, just do it. Like then you are thinking about the tracheostomy. So when you, when you think about tracheostomy, do it. The thing which are important, but they are not, not urgent, plan it. The thing which are not important, but they are urgent, delegate it. But those which, which are not important and not they are urgent, just eliminate it. Criteria for the trainee. But out of all these points, I consider the honesty must be there. This is the first point. If you are honest, your interest, your humanity, attitude, accessibility, and eligibility, they can be improved. The mature features, of course, the honesty, punctuality, keen to learn, and this must be target oriented. The student must be able to see and to remember the target at the end of their training. The target is to spend three years for the purpose of learning examination, how to complete their dissertation, how to, how to complete their logbook with honesty, to learn center procedure, and when he's going out, he must be competent enough to deliver to his society. Academic protocol, of course, we all know this. The feedback from the trainee side, from the students, from the college, from the colleagues and from the institution, and he should have a futuristic vision. And this is my format for all students. That every student, every clinician, must keep this format in the mind. When the patient comes, Tell me what is your diagnosis and can you define your diagnosis? Can you classify your diagnosis? What is the natural history and the clinical history of your disease with which the patient has come? What are the possible treatment options and which one you will select, keeping the risk benefit ratio in mind? And complication if arises are can you manage that? And what is the management protocol for those complications? How you follow? these cases with recent advances, what is your future planning for this patient? And at the end, when you treat this patient, what recommendation you can make? You must keep a record keeping and document these things. So this is a clinical format for every sort of, I must say, for the students, for doctors, for practicing consultant, and even for the teachers. This will come. You, you, you can guess almost, you can complete almost 90-95% of your clinical work from this format. And in the end, I must say that an academic neurosurgeon is the one who works in academic medical center. He should have a teaching skill, a good clinical practice, but of course on one side, he must have a research abilities and administrative role as well in that institution. But at the, in the end, this comes in my mind. Hasil is in the key. Hasrat ke sewa kuch bhi nahi. Ye kya nahi. Wo hua nahi. Ye mila nahi. Wo raha nahi. Thank you very much.